Hi, how's everyone today? Good? Yeah. I'm having a great time, I'm telling you, this is awesome. My name's uh, Dave Snell Howarth, I'm an author uh, of fantasy novels. I hail from San Jose, California. And if you're interested, I'm also in the program as well. So, uh, and I'm also available after to talk about fantasy and Tolkien and Lewis and all those wonderful things. And first, I have to apologize though, and there's a reason for this, was when I bought the Freema photograph, you know, for $30 to go meet her and take a picture with her, well, it's at five o'clock. Well, a week ago, I found out my panel was at five o'clock at the same time. So now I have someone monitoring the, the door and monitoring, monitoring the line. So when it gets short enough, I'm just gonna bail and then come back. Okay? Because I don't wanna miss this. This is the first time she's been at a convention. I'm really excited to meet her, you know, and she's, she has a great list of work that she's done, just not with Doctor Who, but you know, many other things. And it'd just be an honor just to, hey, let me jump in, take a picture. Okay, great, bye, you know. So I hope uh, you forgive me for that. You're so thank you very much. <laughs> You realize, of course, to reiterate, you know, what everyone has mentioned, um, and also the TV Guide, which is a first for Doctor Who. It's amazing. I mean, watching Doctor Who for the first time uh, was Terror of the Zygons. I was a six-year-old kid visiting my relatives in Manchester, and I fell in love with the Doctor, uh, you know, as soon as he pulled out a jelly baby. And when Moffat is done, he's, he's made it darker. Most of our characters now Batman, the new Superman coming out, a lot of the characters are darker, so he's putting a darker feel to the show compared to in the past, because people are looking at heroes now, not like the goody two-shoot type character, but kind of like there's this gray part of the character, and this is what I believe uh, uh, Matt Smith and, and uh, Moffat brings to Doctor Who. Um, me, preferably, I am all about classic Doctor Who. Um, and when they told me about this panel, I, I mentioned to Gallifrey, when I said, now you, you realize I'll be playing the part of the master on this panel, because I have a lot of issues with Moffat. But I tell you what, you know, internationally, he's brought Doctor Who to a level that watching it on PBS, when I was a kid, never thought it would ever get to, ever, in my life. So I do congratulate him for that. How much of uh, you know the dark? You know, dark has become darker. You know, being a being a fan of the classic series, you know, and, and having every darn DVD on disc um, and watching them religiously is you know there is a point also I agree to the to the darkness of the character because you know if you're a classic Who fan you're watching from the very first episode with William Hartnell and watching his character progress throughout the years. You know, there comes a point where he's just at times, fed up. He's just tired of it all. You know, it's like he wants to run away from him running away, you know, from Gallifrey and started his adventure with William Hartnell. And as time goes by, he is getting darker. He's, he's just, he just, within himself, he's, he's almost like tearing himself apart. And we see that at times with, you know, uh, David Tennant when he played and now with Matt Smith, there's something inside him that, you know, how many times are gonna come across these dialects? How many times, do, you know, do I have to save the world? You know, the snowman, which I think is the best uh, of the Matt Smith uh, episodes, in my opinion. And he's hi he's hiding up there. Well, he's hiding for a reason. You know, he just wants to kind of get away from it all. And this is also, I, I believe, what makes him dark as well. I don't know if that's silly. Say something about the show. Um, Moffat at times, it, it irritates me. Being a Doctor fan, I'm sorry. There's an episode. I'm sure you guys out there can name the episode for me, where River Song is landing the TARDIS, materializing, and the TARDIS noise is you know, and as usual, he always has, and uh, something about you know the Doctor is always holding the brake. Well, excuse me, but then every TARDIS in the entire series, everyone's been holding the brake. No, that's I, I don't believe that's a fact. I don't. You know, I don't know why he would have that in there. Just, you know, as a fan, it just kind of irritates me because as a, as a true fan, you know that's not true. I mean, River Song, I liked her when her character met the 10th Doctor. I thought, great character. And I liked when she first started. But then she became irritated to me. And I know a lot of people believe, oh, she's a female Doctor, and, and that's fine. But, you know, I just think they've, they've given her too much. And, and I think... Uh, 
you know, the doctor is the hero. And when I think about a doctor female, I think of a, a, more of a Dr. Donna than, you know, uh, River Song. Get that uh, in the Aztecs, William Hartnell was about to get married to an Aztec woman, so, you know, he was playing in the early days, too, so. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's see a man. I'm asking this in regards to a change of Dr. Um, you know, companions. I would like to see at least, uh, well, he's had other uh, you know, but I mean, like a Silurian or, uh, or a Centaurian uh, companion. Someone not human or not Dr. Or, yeah. yeah, something like that, or at least Give me a Canadian. I mean, other, <laughs> other than too alien, way too alien. About Amy, I, I think I understand what you're, where you're coming from a little bit, but when Amy first came on the scene, Scottish girl, redhead, I'm telling you, probably the most beautiful, attractive, alluring companion the doctor has ever had. Okay, and, when, and she's fantastic, but I will admit that she did become irritating in the last. You know, you're kind of like, okay, can we get a new companion here? But I don't understand what you're saying, but I understand when she first came out to the scene, she was she was fantastic. So I'll give her that for sure. A Amy went through a real I, I have to add a little something. You know, watching Doctor pretty much all my entire life, you know, when a new Doctor comes around, you're like, okay, great. You know, what's this guy going to be like, you know? And I did like Matt Smith in the beginning, but he was like number nine on my list, really. You know, had, he had to warm up to me. And, and after I watched Snowman, I said, you know what? I love this guy, really. He has some of the best lines, and I have warmed up to him, and he's, I think he's like number six on my list of 10 now, and he's just, you know, he's a great guy, and, and he's a great actor, and when he first came to mind, I said, oh, he's, you know, kind of a bit actor. I didn't know much about him, and I, when I looked at I Am uh, what, DB, <laughs> uh, he did a few things, and you know what? I thought, I thought, I think he's the perfect choice for, for what, what's going on now with this series, for sure. You people. I say bring back Carol Ann Ford as Susan and have her travel as a uh, grandfather and granddaughter again. That would be a real trip, literally. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned uh, you know, the Christmas special um, and being a fantasy author, you know what? That was one of my favorite episodes. I love C.S. Lewis and I, I, I saw his, his uh, homage to Lewis. Um, Lewis is someone who's impacted uh, Western uh, culture through his writing, so I felt uh, it was adequate, and it was one of my favorite storylines that they've done, actually. We've got about 10 minutes. Let me get one. Uh, on the, to keep to the theme of this side of the table, uh, he's definitely a better showrunner. I can go through a laundry list of episodes that I thought was bad when I first watched it, and then I get on Gallifrey Base, and they say, well, watch it again. You'll like it better. I'm sorry, my Doctor Who, I, if I watch it first time, I should be able to love it. I, I love it. almost every... Uh, classic episode except for, um, was it, uh, Colin Baker, the, the one, time, thank you, time rush, I think we all agree on that one. Um, the Doctor's Wife, I, I'm sorry, there's no excuse for that. Um, a, town, a Town Called Mercy, I'm sorry. Um, you know what, I'll turn on Cowboys and Aliens, that's where you got it from. I mean, come on, be original, think of something new. <laughs> well, first I'll say, if I was running BBC, this is what I would do with Doctor Who. Number one, I'd have two production teams, okay? One working on this ongoing series now, and we're all looking forward to the 50th, we know it's gonna be great. But then I'd also have another production team working with Paul McGann, Christopher Eccleston, and getting a Time War mini-series. And we're talking about high-end special effects, we're talking Centaurus, Simon, dialects, you name it, throw them out there, and I have, well, I have, being right, I have all these ideas, what can happen, but all I'm saying is, we need that. I'm a completist, I'm a doctor who completist. I need it. Before, before I die, I want to see a regeneration. I'm sorry, I have to see it. That's what I would do. I'm gonna echo what Stephen Moffat actually told me to my face about that, is that we, oh, we wanted to see the Clone Wars for years and years, and it ended up being a trade dispute. Um, <laughs> You can never ever see that time war. It's so serious, you know, over in a sense, you're right. And in, a, in the United States, it was irritating because you'd watch on BBC America and you'd go through this whole Amy Doctor intro every episode, and it was just ridiculous. But that's to introduce new people to the show, it's understandable. But for fans like that, it was irritating. I agree. Uh, 
<laughs> to agree with you, I would love, I would love to see the doctor in Gallipoli. You know, yes. really, I would I love to see that. See uh, you know, how many yeah, times are we going to see a doctor, the doctor land in a spaceship, or you know, I, some, I, I'm, I'm in the history, and, to, and I think a lot of us are. I mean, it's part of Andrew, but to be a Gallipoli, or to all of a sudden land in the Red Square of Moscow during the height of the Soviet Union, and he looks at me, oh my gosh, again. You see what I'm saying? So I would love to see a more and more historical factual events, like uh, Pompeii was just awesome. You know, more of those type of episodes.